You won't believe how bad this is. If you thought that Home Alone 3 was the major stinger, oh no. This one takes that place. Daniel Stern was approached to play the role of Marv, but do you know what he said? He declined, rather quickly actually, calling this piece of garbage an insult to the original movie. Yeah, it's that bad. So, what is it about the fourth movie that's simply that bad? For starters, it is yet again the McAllister family we follow. And to put the timeline straight, this movie is between Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2. So, basically, Home Alone 1.5. And since we follow the McAllister family, wouldn't you think that they would all be there? Sadly, this is not the case. The writers couldn't find a fitting role for all five children in this movie. So, they went with Kevin, Buzz and Megan McAllister. Simply, they forgot Linny and Jeff. Apparently, they just didn't care. Making this movie be somewhere around nowhere? I do hope they say hi from me. Seriously, I could make a 10 minute long rant about how this is not the same family and also how this is outside the realm of home alone. Simply stating the fact that they are only three children instead of the original five. So instead of that, let's just move on with the story instead. The movie starts out simply enough with half of the McAllister preparing for Christmas each in their own way. Megan by dancing, Buzz by being more of a jerk than usual. The mom doing whatever moms are doing and Kevin this time played by Michael Weinberg who is watching tapes about previous Christmas, where the whole family was together. Oh, did I forget to tell you that their parents have been divorced? So if we assume that this movie is in the same realm as the other two Home Alone movies, excluding the second one for now, since this takes place before, what significant thing would make these parents want to break up? I mean, apart from leaving a child alone at home once. Let's take a look at the original movie. Just one clip. Honey, what's this? He finds a gold tooth, and apparently that's enough to suspect his wife cheating on him. <coughs> what's that? <coughs> that's just too lame? <coughs> well, sorry. But that's the only explanation the movie can provide. It's not like this movie gives us any better reason. My boss. In fact, this movie doesn't even provide an explanation as to why they broke up. So, back to the story. Kevin's mom has to leave the house and instead of putting some old geezer like the previous movie to babysit, she puts Buzz in control of the situation. Gee, it's like the movie is becoming self-aware. I mean, if someone said that this movie was a Home Alone movie, I would also have said no. I've done it before. So, as you probably could guess by the enthusiasm the writers have put into the movie, Buzz is extremely stereotypical all-American bully you'll see in any other bad movie flick featuring this role. Let's take a look at Home Alone 1. In this film, Buzz is a jerk, no escaping that. But it feels more real and his motives are more relatable. Overall, he feels more like an annoying older sibling, more than new boss. The new boss feels more like he's evil for the sake of being evil. After boss is done annoying the living dead out of Kevin, their mother returns. And here the writer wanted to recreate the scene with Kevin getting into an argument with his mother. You know, like in Home Alone 1 and 2. But like the movie, this scene is also extremely unrealistic, dull and downright boring. It feels like the writer shit again didn't care at all and just included it because it was in Home Alone 1 and 2 and it worked in those movies. And when something like this happens, it's just, just sad really. Excuse me. 
Look what you did, you little jerk. All right, I'm back. Back to the story. We see our main villain, Harry. Sure is, Marv. Marv? I I'm sorry, but that is Harry. I mean, just look at the clothes. Mm, yeah, and also he acts more like Harry and he does Marv. I mean, how little he act. And also, who the hell is that dumb chick? Never mind. Let's just get back to Kevin. Kevin is more and fed up with this part of his family and decides to take a cab to his dad's residence to spend Christmas there instead. And for an 80 year old boy, this seems like the better choice. I mean, they have more presents, more stuff, and a cool living space. What 8 year old boy wouldn't love to be here? So Kevin's father and Natalie shows Kevin his living quarters. And I'm just going to say it, I want a room like that. The next day Kevin gets an early present and is now left home alone. Alright, so now the movie starts. Who the hell are you? Oh, Mr. Prescott! Yeah, I don't give a damn about your name. What the hell are you doing here, man? What are you doing here? This movie is called Home Alone. If you're here, there's no point in calling it that, is there? I have just about had enough of you and your- You are going to stay, aren't you? Yes. Great. Now we can call this movie Never Home Alone, which... Now that I think about it, it's a way more fitting name. So after we establish that this guy is the obvious villain, we have a montage of Kevin as always liking his situation. Again, because the other two movies used it, then this also need to. Seriously, when you use the same song as the one Garfield used in his movie, then you know you're almost at rock bottom. Not that rock bottom. That was a pretty decent episode. And now it's time for Harry and his merry girl to go into the house to be the kidnapping bandits. No, not Kevin. Some kind of prince from God knows where, who's arriving soon. And in movie language, that means he's only going to show up at the very end of the movie. Making this whole plot simply stupid and pointless. So now Kevin outsmarts the bandits with the most notorious of all traps yet. Getting them wet. Ah, oh, really? I mean, if you're not green and live in us, water is really not that threatening. But of course, as all luck would have it, dumb luck I say, the bandits escape and now Kevin has to confront Natalie who... Well, just watch. Seeing that Mr. Prescott, even though being home, didn't notice the crooks, Kevin decides to try and see if the surveillance camera caught anything. VHS, 2002, really? They couldn't afford DVD even though they are probably the richest family in miles. Uh, what? It's supposed to be 1991? Well, that's just stupid. I saw PS1 in his room earlier. And he also have a CD player. Not to mention the technology in that house is just way too advanced for that time period. <laughs> so the other McAllister family visits to bring Kevin Teddy. Yep, and before you can say I wish I was watching Home Alone 1 instead, they switch to the scene where they prepare for the party of the season. And again, some extremely dumb slapstick later, her and Mary as I call her. Eh, doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure she doesn't want us to remember this role. The two bandits sneak in, this time as waiters, and is yet again foiled by Kevin, who doesn't even have a plan or any well thought out traps. I know that I said that Alex was too much of a boy wonder, 
but I never wanted them to replace him with this idiot. And of course gets scolded by his father and also Natalie, who the movie suddenly decides to make a villain about now. I'm saying this mainly because she never showed any characteristics of being mean or downright sadistic. She was just a uh, full of herself, rich lady who... Well, I don't know. But I know that she just took a 180 degree turn into Burnsville. So now that the whole family hates him, he decides like the other movie to finally set up traps. Really? Two fucking traps, not even that great? And why am I not surprised by this? So now after all that exciting prep time, he gets rid of Harry's intel presto, presco, prescott, sorry about that, and tells the maid about it, who turns out to be Harry's mother. Great. So after being locked up by the Wicked Witch of Chicago, Kevin and Prescott finds a way for Kevin to get out and stop their schemes. Which again leads to some more lame old traps and slapstick scenes until finally the parents get home and of course this movie ends with the father and mother being reunited. Presto leaves to find a better job and everything is nice and happy again. No, no. Until they make another one, that is. But that was Home Alone 4. And where do I even begin to criticize this? For starters, the actors doesn't even care at all. So many of the lines sound and feel scripted. You clearly see some mediocre actors here and not a family at all. The traps are just lazy and dull, even more than the third one, which... I really should praise more and I did in my review of it, since that thing is simply a masterpiece when compared to this. And another thing, Kevin is never fucking home alone, there's always someone in the house. And speaking of the house, that whole technology thing, they barely used it to a minimum of its potential, there's just nothing that adds up at all. The worst thing is probably that the producer hoped that this could breathe new life into the series and even make a TV show based on it. Wow. Just wow. If that is not terrible to hear after watching, then I don't know what is. As we all know, Huge has nothing to do with this movie and to be fair, I'm pretty sure he really appreciated that he didn't have to do this movie. Yes. So that was all of my Christmas specials. I hope you enjoyed them and yeah, I got nothing more to say now. Just have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.